Masters, this is a new video talking about the latest Playwright features that I haven't covered yet and also I'm going to show you how to use them. The first thing that we can do is disable code snippets in the HTML report. Let me show you first of all how it normally behaves. I'm going to execute this command pmpm accept Playwright test. I'm going to wait for a few seconds and then we are able to execute the command to show the report which is the one that you can see over here in the terminal with the show report at the end. So I'm going to execute it and there it is. Now we have the report in, a, in our browser. If I open any of the tests that we have available, you're going to see that there is or there are the code snippets. All right. So I can hide them. This is the magic of this new feature. Let me show you how easy it is to configure it. So you come here to the playwright.config.ts, then you have to look for the reporter option and add this object configuration over here and set no snippets to true. There it is. Then just have, you just have to, well, execute again your tests. Well, then just open the report with the command show report. And then if I look inside of the test, probably now I don't have the code snippets. I just have the steps as they are. Awesome. There is a new option in the HTML report that, that allows us to set the custom title that we want for a specific run. Let me show you how easy it's to set it up. First of all, you need to come to the playwright.config.ts and look for the reporter option. So then you just have to set the title in the configuration object and you can set the title that you want. In my case, I'm going to execute or I'm going to set the report number one for Joint Media. I am going to run the tests as, uh, as I would do it normally. And once I have done that, I just need to execute the command with the show report at the end, just to make sure that I open the report in the browser. And there it is. Now I have the title that I specified in the configuration file. That's it. There is a new method locator that describe that it's going to describe a locator. It's easy, but it is powerful. Let me show you that under the login page object that I created here in this class, you can see that I have different locators. I have a username locator, a password, a sign in button. But when I'm defining it in the constructor, you can see that for instance, the username locator, it is just pointing or using a simple page that get by role to find the element as we always do, right? However, if you see the password, I have a describe at the end describing that this is the password input. I know it's so simple and probably mm, you, you, you may be wondering why this is useful. Let me show you in the HTML report the power of this. I'm going to run the command show report. OK, and there it is. I am going to open the test where I'm using this page object, for instance, and you can notice the following thing. This is filling the test user value in the get by role textbox username. This is using the, the whole locator to describe in the test report what is going on. However, if you see the, the second step here, it is describing the locator with the describe method, password input, and the same for signing button. Now we are presenting like a more understandable report to a final user if we want to, right? This is a good way to handle a more describable and more readable reports using the describe method. I think it's awesome. And let me know in the comment section, what do you think about this? I love this, to be honest. Well, this command is kind of new, but I didn't know that it exists. It is the MPX Playwright install dash dash list. It is going to display a list of all the installed browsers, versions and locations that we have in our system. So let me show you that. I'm going to copy this command. I'm going to open the terminal and I'll be copying that. Let me just cancel this execution. I'm going to paste it over here and you're going to see all the stuff that we have in our computer. So I have the Playground version 1.49 uh, and all the versions of the browsers that you can see over here. So this is awesome. So you can see what you have in your computer in case you need it. There is a new feature in Playwright and it is that when there is an error, right? and you have it printed in your HTML report, now you can copy it as a prompt. So you can just copy it in your preferred 
AI and it is going to give you insights and probably if you're using an agent or an MCP server, it can actually use the agent to fix it automatically. So how it works, I use enter or uh, introduce an error in my test. I just execute it, the test suite and now I have a test error to show you. Okay, this is it. This is the error in our browser. And as you can see here, it is, or there is a new copy prompt button. So I just have to copy it and I can paste it in my GPT, <laughs> right? Or Gem Gemini or Claude or any AI. But I'm gonna just show you how it looks here in the, well, in my editor. It has a lot of details, you know? It has instructions. Following playwright test failed, explain why, be concise, respect playwright best practices, and provide a snippet of code with the fix if possible. <laughs> All right, this is the test information. It provides the test name, the location, and here we have the test error details, you know? So here it is. Then it provides a page snapshot with all the snapshot of the website that I have. So it has more context about this, you know? And this is a test source with the test file that I just executed. That's awesome, you know? And then here we have the local changes and the, um, the instruction that failed. So I think it's awesome, you know? And this is something new that I didn't know that exists and this is cool. I know it's not super new, but it is cool. There is something new as well and it is that we can capture the git information in our test config that metadata and print it in the HTML report. Let me show you how easy it is to do it. You go to your playwright.config.ts and under that file you just have to enter a new configuration which is this line of code. Capture git info commit true div true. With this line of code, when you save the changes, you execute your suite and you open your uh, report, you're gonna see something pretty similar than this. This is the report. And if you open here the metadata section, here you have the latest commit that I did and also the information of who did it and the date. So this is something cool that you can also add in your reports. There is a new feature as well that now we can skip a test step. It's so easy. Let me show you how it works. Here is the example. I have a parent test step named testing the test skip, <laughs> you know, and then um, here we have different test steps under that. The first one is before running a step. This is going to work. Then you can see that I have test step that the skip not yet ready. This is not going to be executed. And the third one is going to run after running a step. It doesn't have the skip and it is going to run without any kind of issue. When you open the report, you're going to see that, uh, well, under this testing, this, the test skip, here we have three, three different steps. The first one is running. The middle one is not because it is a skipped. And the last one is running correctly. That's this small feature, but a powerful one if you know how to use it. There is a new option as well that allows us to specify a minimum runtime for an individual step. This is useful because sometimes you know that some steps may uh, need more time than other ones. So the configuration is so simple. Let me show you a quick code snippet that is currently working, but I wasn't able to test it because the action that I have, it is not it doesn't need that amount of time, you know? This is the code snippet. You just need to add the timeout object at the end of your test step. You can specify the amount of time that you need in milliseconds if I am not wrong. So it's super easy, but it is a powerful feature that Playwright implemented recently. Now we have an only changed CLI option. What what is the matter of this? What what we can do with this? Well, it is a new CLI option that only run test files that have been changed since the last commit or from a specific git ref. This will also run all test files that import any changed files. And here we have a couple of options. We can just execute the regular command with only changed flag, but also we can specify the branch that we want to test. So how I'm going to test it. I am, I don't have any specific uh, change that I want to test. So I'm going to duplicate my 
a test file just to make sure that it is gonna only execute the second test file since the first one doesn't have any change. So I'm gonna run it, let me show you that. I'm gonna clear my terminal and I'm gonna go and copy the command that I have in my instruction, do, 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 which is, a, this is the command, pmpm exec playwright test and then only changed. There it is. So as you're gonna see in the final report in a few seconds, it should only run the tests under this new test file because the another one, the original one, doesn't have any change. Okay, so I'm gonna open the report using the command that we here we have in, in our terminal. And as you can see, it is executing the example two that is back that Yes, because that's the difference that we have in our Git. This is a short one, but an interesting one. And before we check that, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you are watching the video and you're, well, taking adv advantage of it, it is gonna help me a lot. Thank you very much, Master, for your support. But this is the feature. Now they added the previews and next buttons to the HTML report to quickly switch between test cases. All right, I'm gonna open the test report over here. I'm gonna open any of the test cases that we have available. And you're gonna see that at the top, here we have previews and here we have next. So it is gonna be easy for us to, well, switch between tests and navigate through them. I appreciate this feature because I know that there are some reporters that don't, doesn't have this kind of option. So it's cool. I appreciate it. Thank you, Playwright. <laughs> okay. There is something new in the UI mode, right? How you can run the UI mode, it's pretty simple. You just need to add the flag dash dash UI and you're gonna get something pretty similar than this. This is the UI mode where you can debug and execute your tests and see what is going on, you know? So here you can see that I can run my tests and well, we're gonna have a beautiful it is step by step of what is going on. But the thing here is that there is something new in the UI mode when we check the network tab. And that is that we can copy as a curl, copy as fetch and copy as playwright the different network requests, requests that are happening behind the scenes, you know? So let me open here the UI mode and I'm gonna go to network. And for instance, this is the, the login request that happened under the hood. So if you see this button over here, copy request, I can copy as a curl, as fetch, and as a playwright. So I can just copy that for instance, and I'm gonna show you that if I open a new file over here, this is the structure that it has. It is a page that requests, that get, here we have all the headers and all the stuff that we, we, can, uh, we can need if we want to debug or check any or of the requests that happen under the hood in a specific and it is going to be a lot of help for us i think so so this is a good implementation and i appreciate it thank you playwright again there is a new cli option named last failed and it is going to help us to run only the tests that failed in the previous run as you can see right now i just executed my test suite i introduced an error in one of my tests and I only want to run the tests that failed in the previous run. So it's as simple as you can imagine, you know? So uh, I'll introduce the test, but now I'm gonna introduce the last failed, failed CLI option. And as you're gonna see, it is only executing the tests that didn't work or didn't pass the last time. And there it is. If I open the report again, it is only executing them. And when I fix them, you can see that it is gonna work. It is just executing the ones that didn't, uh, that didn't pass the last time. So let me fix them pretty quickly. I'm gonna execute it again. And they are gonna work. And now we are happy with the result, you know? This is a very interesting CLI option that I know it is gonna help you in your daily workflow. There is a bit of rain in, in the place that I am living, so if you are hearing something in the background, I'm sorry, but this is the last step and I need to record it. This is the clock functionality, the clock API that now Playwright offers. It is, uh, it is gonna allow you to manipulate and control time within tests to verify time-related behavior. 
So for instance, this is a code snippet that I extracted from the documentation because in this moment I don't have a, an example where I can demo it, but we can in, initialize and let a website to load naturally, you know, with the with normal new date. Then we can pretend that the user closed the laptop lit and open it again at 10 a.m. So using the clock API, we are able to do it. We can assert the page state and then we can manipulate more the time to make sure that some behaviors are expected or not, you know? So that's it for now. Thank you very much, masters, for your attention. Please let me know in the comment section if you liked this kind of video because I am enjoying it. And I hope to see you in the next one. See you there, masters. Bye-bye.